Welcome back everyone. Today I will recap a 2007 Indonesian horror film named Kuntalanik 2. To understand the movie better, please watch the first part, the link is in the description. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. At the beginning of the movie, we see Sam going somewhere in a taxi. Suddenly the weather turns bad and it starts raining. And taking advantage of this, the taxi driver tells Sam that he is going to take her money, but he is not going to hurt her. He stops the car in a deserted dark alley. Sam hands him her purse and gets down from the car and starts leaving quietly. But the taxi driver notices that she has very little money in her purse, so he stops her and tells her that this is his territory and that she should better come with him. Sam angrily turns towards him, goes near him, and starts chanting something in his ear, causing him to have very frightening visions. She then leaves there, and the taxi driver tries to drive away out of fear, but his car does not start. He then rolls down his car's window to seek help, but suddenly he hears someone's laugh and the window starts rolling up, due to which his head gets chopped off and falls down. We then see a man yelling at Madeng, and here we learn that he is a client of the Matkojiwa sect and they promised to bring wealth to him. But they were not able to do so, that's why the man is asking them for his money back. He threatens Madang that he will call his guards to ransack this place. Madang apologizes to him and asks him does anybody know about his visit here, to which the man says he is not a fool to reveal his own secret, and when he asks for his money, Enseg grabs him and Madang breaks his thumb. Enseg then brings him to the woods and kills him. We then see all the members of the Magkodewo sect, where Madang says that the death of Sri Sukma has brought them to such a point as this. Enang says she was the only one of them who had the gift to call the Kuntalanak. Now because they can't get their job done without Kuntalanek, their clients are getting mad. Mariono says she who killed Sukma must have had the gift to chant for Kuntalanek, to which Warsi says they have to find her and Yanti is the only one who knows her. However, Yanti herself has been missing ever since. Now Manang says they have to do whatever it takes to take the girl with the gift with them. Then a person whose face is not shown says they have to find her before she goes to the one whose name is better left unspoken. On the other hand, Sam reaches a boarding house, where the owners welcome her and tell her that her stuff arrived three weeks ago. The lady introduces her to her husband and daughter Yenny, and we see that Yenny is quite scared seeing her. She goes to her grandpa and tells him that something is coming, and Yenny's father tells Sam that her room is upstairs and that it's the room of their elder daughter who is having an internship now in Australia. Yenny's mom says they don't usually accept strangers, but they trust her. Meanwhile, we see Agung in an abandoned building, where Kuntalanek comes out of the mirror and injures him by attacking him. However, he suddenly wakes up, and it turns out to be a nightmare. Agung takes his medicines, and then Ewing comes there and tries to calm him down. He checks him and tells him that he has to fight the trauma and stops him from taking any more medicines. He says he has to face his source of fear, and here Agung takes the names of Sam and Kuntalanek. Iwink asks him if has he ever seen the Kuntalanek. Due to this Agon gets extremely terrified and tries to tell him about that night, but then asks him to stay out of this and that he better go home now. Iwink says he found some news clips for him, and he thinks that the key to his problems is with Sam, so he has to find her. Now that night, Sam calls Iwink and begins singing Link's Your Wengi. Iwink gets scared of this and shortly after his nose starts bleeding. He tries to calm himself down, but only then notices a figure there in his house and hears a faint laugh. He tries to ignore it, but then Kuntalanek appears right behind him, due to which he gets terrified and trips and dies. On the other hand, Sam wakes up hearing some noise and finds Sukma in her room. She tells her that she is not here to disturb her. It's difficult when it's all over and she lived her life in sin. She neglected her belief and culture too, and all that is left is nothing but regret, and then she disappears from there. Now when Sam goes in front of that mirror, she notices that her reflection in the mirror is acting differently, and then someone begins calling her name. Her dark side then appears in front of her and asks her why she never met herself before. She tells her that she has killed and sinned, and she was aware of doing it all. She says she is the side of herself that she has been pretending does not exist. Sam says she never wanted to kill Iwink, to which she gets furious and says he was messing around with their business, telling Agung to find them. Sam says she has killed enough, to which she says they are the same, but she is so weak, so let her be the one to lead them. She then begins assaulting Sam to take control over her, but Sam fights back and overpowers her, and sends her back to the other realm. Yenny's dad then comes there and asks her if is everything okay, as Yenny said she heard noises, to which she says everything is fine. However, Yenny gets terrified seeing Kuntalanek there behind Sam. He tells her that there is nothing there and then leaves there. After this, when he is putting Yenny to sleep in her room, she says that Sam is evil, to which he tells her not to be so quick in judging someone as they have not seen many sides of Sam's personality yet. 
Meanwhile, Agon gets a call from Ewink's mom, who tells him that Ewink has passed away. Agon gets shocked to hear this and as he is about to take his medicine, he remembers Ewink and stops. He then remembers Ewink saying the key to his problems is with Sam and that he has to find her. We then see Sam at her mother's grave, where she tells her that not a single day goes without her in her thoughts and we see someone is spying on her. Now that night, Agon breaks into that boarding house where Sam used to live. However, when he enters the second floor, he starts having those terrifying visions. He calms himself down and finds a book there in which some spells are written in the Javanese language. Now as he is about to leave with the book, suddenly Kuntalanek haunts him, due to which he gets terrified, but manages to flee. We then see Yandy at her place doing some kind of ritual and trying to communicate with Sam in her dreams. Meanwhile, Yenny goes to the bathroom, where she hears someone laughing and suddenly Kuntalanek haunts her. Sam asks her what's the matter, but she just runs away from there. On the other hand, Gung checks those news clips that Yuan gave him, and from them, he learns about the taxi driver that was found dead on Ketchalusen Street. He then goes there and finds Sam, and tells her that he remembers everything that happened to him, so now he understands what she has been through. Sam says she can't stand it, and she doesn't know what else to do, to which he says she is strong. Sam begins leaving there, and Agung stops her and says they will face it together. However, she asks him to go home and that he should better stay away from her. She says she finds it hard to recognize her own self. Sometimes everything feels so good and it all makes her satisfied and she finds pleasure in taking other people's lives. She asks him does he know how it feels. Agon tells her to stop talking like this and that she is just carried away. However, Sam leaves there telling him to leave her alone. She then returns to her boarding house and Yinny gets terrified seeing her. Outside, Agon follows her to her boarding house and as he tries to read that book, he notices the number plate of the car in front of him and gets shocked to see Satan written on it. And only then Sam knocks on his window. We then see them together and she tells him that she misses the times they spent together and she hopes everything will be over soon. The next day, they visit Yanti and she bows before her. Yanti tells her that she knows that she has received the message she sent her and that she is hiding from the Mankajiwal. They take orders from people who need human sacrifices requested by the psychics or simply their business rivals. The Makkojiwo takes their money and then summons Kuntalanek to do the dirty work. Now they are looking for her because she is the only one with the gift to summon Kuntalanek. Sam says this evil gift is taking her away into becoming something else, and she is carried away to the depth of her darkest soul, where everything is so absurd, but gives a lot of pleasure. Yandy tells her that the Makkojiwo's she devil is growing more powerful and getting out of control, and she will take her revenge on her. The more she is summoned, the closer she will get back at her. Sam asks her what should she do, to which she says they will take hold of her and take control of the Kuntalanek. They will make her the worst kind of person. Outside, we see Enning and Radu with their weapons, and Radu says that it was such a mistake to assign Yanti to keep the Makkojiwo mansion. Meanwhile, Agung asks Yanti if the gift could come upon Sam, then it could also be thrown away. Yanti says nobody knows how to dismount the gift, and only then she asks her when was the last time she visited her mother's grave. She then tells them that they are here so they have to leave now, and asks them to find the great-grandmother in Yujin Sido. They both hide inside in a room, and then Enning and Radu enter the house and Enning kills Yanti by slashing her throat. Agon then comes out to fight and tries to snatch Radu's weapon, but during this, Enning finds Sam and drags her outside. Agung throws Radu at Enning, and only then a man enters the house with a weapon. He attacks and injures Agung and throws him away, which makes Sam furious. She signals Agung to leave and he runs away from there, after which Sam begins singing Lingsir Wangi to summon Kuntalanek. Enning also manages to run away from there, after which Kuntalanek appears there behind that man, and Sam notices a nail coming out of a wall, which goes straight to the forehead of that man, due to which he dies, and then she kills Radu too. Now after some time when Agung comes back in, he finds Radu's and that man's dead bodies they're covered in blood, and Sam sitting beside them. Meanwhile, Yenny screams in fear, and she tells her grandpa that she sensed someone's dead. Later, Sam and Agung return to her boarding house, where he tells her that he saw that she had no other choice, and asks her not to do it again. Because if she keeps on chanting, she will be completely lost. He then checks that book, and they find the name of the village Yujing Sido in it. Grandpa and Yenny then also come there, but only then Yenny's father calls out for Samantha to come out as they are being followed. Grandpa tells them not to go downstairs and asks them to come with him as he has a place to get out of here. He brings them to a basement and tells them that it is the back side of their house, and Agung says he thinks they are safe here. However, here it is revealed that Grandpa is also a follower of the sect, and they get terrified seeing Yenny's mom's and dad's dead bodies there. The other followers then make them captive and put black masks on their faces, and then they knock Agung out. Later, Maneng tells her that it is their regret to have her captured like this. She has the power to release herself but she doesn't want to use it. 
Twice she has stayed in their place proves that Magko Jewo is her destiny. They then tie Agung to kill him, and Medang asks Sam to unleash her anger. They then take Agung out and throws him into a pit. Here Grandpa brings Yenny there and tells Sam to stab her so that he could live eternally. Sam gets furious and throws the knife away, after which Warsi and Ramak come to her and Warsi cuts her hand with a knife and sprinkles her blood on a chicken. She then begins a ritual and casts a spell in the old Javanese language, and soon after Sam begins singing Lingsir Wengi. Seeing this, they all start getting happy, and during this, Sam also comes back there. He tries to stop Sam, but Warsi stabs a knife to his back, and Sam wakes up in another dimension with Aga. He asks her to calm down, and tells her that she is not her. He asks her to calm down, so that she can see clearly, and only then she comes back to her senses. Agung tells her that he will always be by her side, and then he dies in her arms. Now Madang tells her not to fight her destiny, to which she says they use Kuntalanek to kill, but they are more evil than her, and they are the real demons. Only then do they hear Kuntalanek's laugh and they realize that Sam has let Kuntalanek loose. She then appears there, but because of the darkness they could not see it, and they're all so scared. She then attacks everyone and kills them. Meanwhile, Yenny goes missing from there, and while Sam is looking for her, she sees Kuntalanek taking her away. Only then Sam's mom appears there and Sam gets shocked to see her. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.